Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. As you probably already got, this video is about JitGen versus GGLPix. This is a question that comes up uh, uh, every once in a while, so let's go on and try to explain that in an exhaustive manner. Let's start with the obvious differences. So JitGen works with matrices, and I'm pretty sure you know what a matrix is in Max, but uh, let's open the documentation. Uh, so we go into help and then we go into reference, right? And it doesn't matter where we land, but we want to go for the page. What is a matrix or something like that? Let's see if we find it. Window documentation, yeah, there it is. So a matrix uh, here says that is a grid uh, with each location in the grid containing some information. How I like to describe it is that a matrix is a multi-dimensional container for data because that's what it is basically. It can have a lot of dimensions. Each dimension, uh, which we can also imagine as a grid, if we have a two-dimensional matrix, each cell of this uh, container contains some data, which is numbers. And this data is not tied to anything in particular, it's just numbers, just a bunch of numbers uh, contained in, um, in a container, which is good for us when we want to have a lot of numbers processed at the same time. So for example, a matrix, as we know, could contain an image. For example, if I create a JIT matrix object, which is the personification of the matrix container in Max, and then I just drop an image inside this matrix, like whatever, Right, and then I can visualize this image with a chip window. And I can also see what's inside this matrix, which being an image is a two-dimensional container now. And as you can see, is a bunch of number. We can see the values for each pixels of this image. So since an image is made, uh, since each pixel has four values for the alpha, red, green, and blue channels, uh, we can see all the four values of each pixels inside this image. And uh, they are contained inside what in Max is called a matrix. So JITGen works with matrices. And it works on the CPU, which means um, the computer, as you probably know that as well, but your computer has two processors. One is the CPU, the other is the GPU. And the CPU is the one that uh, is um, basically responsible for running your computer, like opening the internet, uh, opening text files, uh, whatever your computer does, calculations. While uh, the GPU, the other processor, is responsible for visualizing pixels on the screen. So basically transforming information that the computer passes uh, to the GPU into colors in the screen. That's what it does. And JITGen works on the CPU. Now, the CPU has already a lot to do with uh, all the stuff that the computer does on the background, like running processes all the time, and um, and also the CPU has a limited amount of cores. Like, there's mostly like eight cores or, or whatever. I don't even know what how many cores this, this Mac has, but they do kind of complex operations. While the GPU... Um, as a lot of course, and it doesn't make complex operations, but can make a lot of operation in parallel because it has a lot of cores. So all the information will kind of stream down to those different cores and being processed in parallel. And it's mostly not complex operations. So that's what the GPU is great at. So JITGen works with the CPU. And mostly when we want to work with images, we mostly want to work with the GPU, and JITGen works on the CPU, so not really good for working with images, because an image is basically a big array of um, values, two-dimensional values, and these mostly we want to process them all at the same time in order to make the process faster. So when we want to work with images, the best way is to work with the GPU, so not with JITGen. So what JITGen is usable? use it for, actually? Well, 99% uh, of the time I use JITGen with uh, GGL Multiple and GGL Mesh. So, for example, if I want to have like um, um, some vertices displayed on the, on the screen, I will create a GGL Mesh which will draw some points, uh, will make the point size kind of bigger, and I will give it a color of white, right? And now I need a context where to render this stuff. Can get rid of this? So I will create a JIT world floating one. That's my uh, OpenGL world. And uh, I can, I have to 
in order to render those vertices in this world, I need to send a matrix to GGL Mesh. Now we say that GGN works with matrices, so it's the perfect tool to create matrices for GGL Mesh, uh, which will represent the position, for example, the position of vertices in the world. So if I create a matrix with three planes, which will be the X and Y and Z positions, and like 10 by 10, um, 10 by 10 cells, so this is now a two-dimensional matrix with 10 by 10 cells, so it contains 100 numbers in total. Actually, 100 numbers by 3, because we have three planes for each cell. So, as we saw before that we add four numbers for the pixels of the image, so we can have up to 32 numbers for each cell of this container, and up to 32 dimensions. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. But we can have a lot of numbers inside this container. So if I double click on JITGEN, it will open. And JITGEN is, uh, we didn't say what JITGEN is per se, but basically it's a matrix processor. So it takes a matrix as input, we say that it works with matrices, and then it can process the data um, in order to um, change the output, the matrix as an output. So for example, if instead I will just use a, a JIT noise, which will produce random numbers between 0 and 1, um, you can see that uh, my points have, have been visualized as uh, in the world because we're just passing the random numbers from the input to the output. Using JITGEN, I could add, for example, a fixed amount of value to all the three planes of the input, and then they will be just a bit more moved to the right. Or I could subtract this value from those numbers, and then it will move to the left, right? But I can also do that kind of in a, um, a dynamic way. So I could, for example, just do like this, like get some parameters inside JIT uh, gen. So for example, I can create a parameter called time inside JIT gen. And I can connect this parameter to my outside patcher. And in this way, I can interact with what's happening inside JIT gen from my patcher. We can say that the epsilon is going to be the cosine, the cosine of time. And then we also need to bang these input matrix. So yeah, that, that's a bit crazy. Uh, let's maybe do like this to have a better idea. Let's create a matrix which will be banged with the noise values. And then we can um, let's make this value smaller, like by 0 0.1 or something. So right, so this is summing now the value, uh, the cosine of the, the sine of the time to the values that we have, uh, the random numbers that we input with JIT noise. So basically, it's just a very convenient way to work with matrices. And uh, we want to use that mostly just with GGL multiple, GGL mesh, and uh, GGL NARBs, for example, GGL volume, there's a bunch of more objects, mostly GGL objects which only accepts matrices as input. So these objects only work with matrices, like GGL Mesh. These are inputs that it has, these are all matrix inputs, as it says itself. So that's JITGEN, right? And now GGL Pix, uh, it's a completely different animal. So what it does is that it works with textures. Now, what is a texture? A texture is a, a bunch of data, very much like a matrix, that lives on the GPU memory though. So while the matrix lives on the RAM, on the uh, memory of the computer, the, um, the, the textures, they live on the memory of the graphical processing unit, the GPU that we talked about. Also a texture doesn't have an arbitrary amount of data like cheat matrix, we could say whatever, up to 32, um, 32 numbers per single cell, we could say, while, GG, while a texture, which is represented in max with the GGL texture object, only has and always has four data for each cell. And it's only maximum three-dimensional. So it can be one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, but uh, that's it. We cannot have like textures with four dimensions, at least as far as I know. So matrix and texture are basically fundamentally different because one resides on the CPU, the, the matrices, and there's an arbitrary uh, number of dimensions and planes, so data for each cell of the container, while the texture can only have maximum three dimension and has always four data for each cell of the texture container, right? 
And we said that when we want to work with matrices, we want to work mostly with um, uh, textures because they reside on the GPU and um, they can be processed in parallel and all the pixels of the image can be processed in parallel. So for example, if we take a movie object with the attribute output texture one, which means now our movie is going to output a texture and we connect its output to a GTP window, then we can drop a movie inside it, whatever, right? Now this is being output as a texture. It means it's loaded directly inside the memory of the graphical processing unit. So it's processing, so the processing, the visualization of these, uh, of these uh, movies, so the stream of frames, is much faster than if we would have done that on the CPU widget matrix. And if we want to process that, we have to use GGLPix. So when you see an object that has this GL uh, thing in its name, it means that it's uh, an OpenGL object, with, which means that it works with the GPU, has something to do with the GPU. So in this case, GGLPix is uh, a processor of images, or of texture actually to be more precise, because a texture could also not be directly an image, but uh, just contain some data that we could use for something else, as a matrix as well, which can be an image, but also can be data that we use for something completely different. Um, well, a GGLPix is as well, we can use the data for whatever, but it's maximum for planes, as we say, the maximum three dimensions. Um, but the difference with GGen is that the data will be processed by the GPU in parallel uh, with a lot of cores, so much faster than if we would uh, uh, do that with GGen. We can do that also with GGen as well, it's just going to be much slower, so we could actually do that. Uh, have a JIT movie without output texture, attach it to the GGen, uh, send out the same uh, movie, Right, connect this. Okay, so now it's working with matrices. Uh, and this process now, if we would process this uh, texture yeah, we, as we are doing with uh, JITGen, we could, for example, just uh, um, make the values twice as big. Uh, this is much slower than if we'll do the same thing on the GPU with GGLPix. So when working with the images and videos, always use GGLPix. Uh, and GPU, so we must want to use JITMovie with output texture. So for example, if we now do here the cosine of the input, uh, whatever, maybe multiply the input by 2 pi just for fun, then we can... Uh, this processing is taking place on the GPU, and it's so much faster than if we will do on the CPU with JITGen. But JITGen is great for working with other stuff, like when we need a bunch of uh, data on the CPU. So for example, for GGL Mesh or for some JavaScript stuff, or when we want to download data from the internet and then use it for visualizing uh, as data visualization, we mostly want to use JITGen to process this data or JavaScript or whatever works on the CPU. But mostly this is where JITGen is going to be useful for data that is on the CPU. So these are the main difference between these two objects, JITGen, CPU, GGLPix, GPU. So, JITGen 3D objects like multiple mesh and NURBS or data that must reside on the CPU for whatever reason. GGLPix textures, GPU, um, you want to use it every time you are processing images or videos. Okay, so that's the gist of it. Hope this was clear enough. If you liked the video, it would be cool if you put a like to it and follow the channel, that would be much appreciated. And if you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon where I share a lot of patches and you can join my Discord community. In any case, I hope I will see you in the next video. Until then, have fun and see you soon. Ciao.